your self-confidence radiates in how you interact with the world and other people around you. Looking after yourself, getting enough sleep, having the right supplements, having fruit, having vegetables, all these things will help to level you up. If you're very comfortable, if everything's good, you stay stagnant. One trait that women find very attractive is a man that actually has values but holds them down as well. What have you had to do that then tells a woman that you can provide for her in the best way possible? The further you can cast the vision, throw yourself in the deep end and execute, then yeah, it expands. I, I would stop hanging out with those people and I'd only keep people <laughs> around me that bring me up. Be the guy to throw confidence. Be the guy to take yeah. lead. Only you can decide if you're not worthy. Yeah. No one else can take that from you. We had a little bit of a break, guys, and then we're back. So yeah, so very good to be back. It's very exciting to be back. Um, I miss the boys. I miss you guys yeah. as well. It's been a couple of weeks since we've seen each other. I know. It's getting separation anxiety to be been honest. Been all over the world, huh? Well, I mean, me and Chris have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've just been doing nothing. Yeah. I was, just locking in, you know? Honestly, it's good, it's it got good. to the point, like, this sounds like first world problems, but oh, it got to the I honestly was like, I need to come back. Like, I wanted my routine back. I wanted to start training again. Like, mm. I didn't train my. Don't get me wrong, I had a great time. Like, Mm. enjoying just eating drinking having a good time with my you know family and my girlfriend but you need you don't have a yeah. routine when you travel mm. I, I love my routine i love and you're on a cruise as well you're right it gets to the point where you kind of yeah you just want to be in the flow state i don't know about you guys but for me like when you're locked in that's when you feel most alive like 100%. you gotta you gotta travel you need the balance because i don't know you want what you you want what you don't have when mm. you're when you're at home grinding you're like oh, i just want to go overseas yeah and you're overseas and you're like yeah. i think the dream is if you can combine both yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm lucky because obviously I create content, uh, yeah. you know, where I go. So that's oh. a fortunate part of what I do full time. Mm. But yeah, I went to um, I went to um, Sri Lanka, China, and Saudi Arabia. So it was very much wide. yeah, it was very much work related. But at the same time, I agree with both of you. Like, I just couldn't wait to get back to Sydney and just get back into the onto mm. the grind, into the routine. Because yeah, when you kind of I think for the first three days when you're like eating whatever you want, having a good time, it's good. Mm. But then you're like, oh, I, I feel sluggish There's now. The brain fog kicks in. There's a point of like you feel gross no return until you're back <laughs> yeah legit and there's I definitely that yeah, well. you look in the mirror like Ugh, and that ties gross. in to exactly what we're talking about in this episode which is confidence confidence oh yeah yes. confidence confidence so that's what this episode will kind of be revolved around especially to young guys out there that are struggling with confidence or want to you know um learn from our experiences not that we're perfect um at all but what we've you know found really has helped us with our confidence and our journey moving forward so but it is a journey that's for sure but before we get into that um i just wanted to have a special mention yeah um, me too actually oh, okay. me too me too so basically um our filmer nick he's a great guy and he's, he's actually um behind the scenes been helping us prepare something so the goat. Mm. um Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday what are you doing? to you. Happy birthday to Bailey. Wow. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. You thought we forgot, mate. You thought we forgot about your birthday, bro. Of course not. Can you read? Can you show the viewers what? Yeah. Cake is? Can we Thanks show for the, the spelling on the name. <laughs> so it's, it's specifically spelt wrong just because he, he, he really gets annoyed by that. Yes. One of my pet peeves. Nah, I was, that's that's funny though. I um, you just wanted to, yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks boys. I oh, appreciate yeah, the big, it. No, I don't think, it's the it's big a, 30, bro. Big 30. So. I don't actually, you Gosh. finally turned 30. So a lot of wisdom. You're going you're gonna to contribute <laughs> right. to this podcast yeah. today. But we, it's not it. It's so, it's so, happy so, birthday, and by the way, a lot of thought was put into this. Yeah? A lot. All right, get his reaction. <clears> oh, uh, first of all, Love the bag. <laughs> what does it say? Oh, yeah. uh, Stay here. Get, get, get a good reaction. Get a good reaction. What? We know you like so, going to the gym a lot, so and we're trying you, to help you. We know you, you like lot. fish. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys are so thoughtful. So what, what we did, that? we went to the seafood shop. We said, what's the highest protein seafood fillet that you have and they gave us that because yeah. there's the eyes there as well oh, so. bro i feel like liver king should i just eat it on the spot you wouldn't you wouldn't quite the head off because we know you're you're really you know looking after your body you're right. into your health routine and, confidence and you know you got to get those amigos wow. that's so. so thoughtful no worries how old are you actually 38 
<laughs> like how old are you actually? <laughs> nah, 26, the big uh, two six oh, in the building. Wow. So another year of wisdom, another year of growth and another year of Confidence. hopefully not being into gen. There we go. What do you mean hopefully? Um, hopeful, hopeful. Birthday boy, you can start off. How do you think, what do you think um, is the key to confidence that you've found in your own life? Mm. Now being 30 and all. Well, like we said before, it is definitely a journey. Um, yeah, it takes time, especially as a guy. I think it's just the reps, right? Like for me, you know, I feel, I'm very strongly of the opinion that as a guy, you kind of need to not earn your respect. Like you have your boys and, and everything, but I feel like the confidence that I've developed evolved from executing on things, putting my whole heart, mind, effort into tasks. And when they're successful, you build confidence in your mind. It's like, all right, if I can achieve that, then now you've raised the bar. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, if I can do that, yes. now I feel have a bit more of a confidence. And I feel like it's all a momentum game as well for me. Like, yeah. it's particularly in the last few years, I've really gone down the route of like getting outside my comfort zone in all kind of areas. So like, you know, I tried skydiving for my birthday last year. Oy. I was petrified of doing that. Nick's still but, petrified. <laughs> but after doing that, then it's like, all right, if I can do that, then I went to go, you know, in, Swi in Switzerland when I was in Europe, I went to do paragliding. I was like, oh, I skydive, so this is easy. Mm. Same in business. Like, you know, if you're in school, you know, you get good marks. Then you go to uni, you smash an assignment, you, you get high grades. Then you're like, all right, if I can, you know, pass that uni grade, now what's next? You go into your corporate career, you smash a project and everyone's like, man, you killed that, you know? Mm. Um, and then you're like, all right, I've been successful in, the, in that element. Now what's next? And, and you start, as soon as you start ticking off those levels, you just start looking bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think the quicker you can jump those levels, like the, heart, the further you can cast the vision and just go for it, I yeah. think the quicker you progress. So mm. even for me, like sitting on this podcast right now, uh, you had asked me to do this like a few years ago, I'd be like, I would be freaking out. Like this, that's, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. But now mm. we're here. These boys have sort of, you know, get mates around you that push you as well. Like these guys push me outside my comfort zone, give me feedback. They're critical. They're like, bro, you need to work on this. Um, and that's kind of what we, what we do here. And I think, yeah, the further you can cast the vision, throw yourself in the deep end and execute and build up proof um, that you can do things, then it's, then yeah, it expands. So. There's, there's no magic pill. I think a lot of people think to themselves, oh, this guy's born with, say, for example, someone's born with good looks or, uh, you know, like a good body um, or, or whatever they've you sort point of- point at me or both. Uh, I pointed at you, but <laughs> both of you, surely. Um, you know what I mean? But like, no one actually knows what they have to do behind the scenes to say, for example, maintain that or, you know, so they, they do say um, hard work beats talent, which is very true. So as you just said, Bailey, like doing the reps and obviously building the confidence uh, from doing the reps is I think the most important thing. Yeah, and, and that all ties into your, your self-worth. Like when you, when you start doing better with, you know, your work, you start, you know, doing all the reps, you start actually saying, hang on a sec, like I am good. I, I, have, I have a lot to offer. Like I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm attractive in the sense, you know, to, to friends, I'm attractive to women. I've got so many things going for myself. And, and that does come with doing things again and again. Like I think me and, me and Jamie were talking earlier um, that – we were talking about when we were younger, we used to we used to watch YouTube and there was a few creators who would specifically do, it was kind of like um, men would um, oh, the subscribe. Day game stuff? Yeah, so men would subscribe to the, the channel and then there was also a membership and stuff, which we didn't do, but we watched some of the videos and yeah. essentially um, the core thing that I took from the- What were the, the videos though? So it was, it was about picking up women, mm. right? So, so it was like guys going out on the street by themselves and just like, Talking to females on the yeah. street. Well, because yeah. pickup artists. I think pickup artists, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously, you know, as a, as a male, I don't know if women know this. They, they, sh <laughs> they, sh they should know this. Well, they but, will now. But the secret's revealed. You know, yeah. you know, speaking for myself, maybe there's guys out there that are the outlier, but I know, I know speaking to you both, like every guy at a certain point in his life, especially when he's young, has had, I guess, uh, you know, a self-doubt, a fear essentially of – you know, approaching women, talking to women, it's always mm. quite daunting, especially when you're very young, right? Can we just, sorry, pause on that. And I want to um, tell people out there why it's actually daunting. And there's actually a study that's been done where it goes back to like us as our most primitive forms. Fear of rejection. Through evolution, yeah. So what actually uh, apparently according to this study was basically back in the day, um, the reason why inherently and instinctively men sort of fear women to some degree is because back then when we were living like cave, caveman times, um, a woman would be sort of like part of another tribe. And if you were to actually overstep that line, 
and try and speak to them or, or tangibly do something, then that would provide you with a threat of death from that tribe. So wow. it oh, kind of goes- That's interesting, bro. Cool. It goes like back that. to like wow, primitive you, you times. And that's, that one, eh? yeah. that's, that's, that's why men are you know, inherently scared to some degree of women, but yeah. Yeah, continue. That's I cool. think, yeah. Well, that's, that's a great point, but I think also it's the fear of rejection. Um, people don't want to embarrass themselves. Maybe there's other people there. People don't want to look bad. So they're, they're worried that they're going to get rejected and then their self-worth is going to come down. So anyway, so back to the point. So we, we would look, the, look at these videos and one of the main, um, I guess, skills that they would teach is to, to men um, was to get out there. And there was a certain target, like daily target of how many people they had to approach. Um, obviously, it was predominantly women that they had to approach. And it doesn't have to be sleazy. It doesn't have to be them trying to you know, sleep with them, take them home or anything. It was, it could be simply as asking for the time. It can mm, be, directions. it can be asking for directions. It can, it can be, you know, um, just approaching a random woman and, and whether you get rejected or not, it's a, it's like a tally. Mm. But what that does is it, it comes back to the reps. If you do a certain thing so many times, you know, hundreds of times, thousands of times, it, then it doesn't become so daunting. It, mm. it can't. It kind of becomes natural. Normalized. Yeah. Um, normalized. Mm. And and you, you don't you don't fear it anymore because you've you've had the worst. You've been rejected. You you may you've maybe been maced. You may be thrown water at you. you you've been yelled at, sworn at. Have you know? had that? Yeah. I have. I've never had that. I've okay. never done. I never. I actually, <laughs> You're too beautiful. No, no I, I never did. I, I never actually did this. I just thought it was really interesting. Oh, right, to be honest. Right, right. I, yeah. I, I, I never did this. On the flip side, that's <laughs> well, a transition. Some okay. Someone else might have done this. Um, but before before you go, you um, gave it away already. Yeah. Well, Swears before, Bailey. <laughs> it's Bailey. <laughs> Surprise. Um, no, but, and, and so basically, as I was saying, so the reps doing it again and again, and that, and I was also telling the boys, like, it's similar to, um, me when I was in real estate, I used to go cold door knocking and that's quite daunting because you're going to someone's house, you know, in their private, private, comfortable space, you're knocking on their door and anyone can be there. They can be abusive. They can hate you. They can be racist. They can, you know, they can be weird. Like it, mm. it can be anything. It can be, yeah. and, and a lot of the time it's literally a slam the door. It's like, it's like F off. Yeah, it's like, yeah. what are you doing on my lawn? Get off. That, that's like 90% of the time. So when you've had that, you know, a couple hundred times a day mm. over years. Get used to it. You, you're immune. What I, do you I, feel? I'll would, I would, I would just put a smile on. I was like, all right, well, bye. What do you feel? <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. fuck myself now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I used to do door knocking, but it was for pizza delivery. So I didn't really get the door slammed in my face unless I didn't want the pizza. But well, your, yours is different. And that's like, a win they, for you because you can eat it. That's a win. They've literally ordered the pizza. I still did it and I got all successful results. So sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, I guess uh, segueing my, into yeah. my experience of what Chris just mentioned. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've always been very much into self-development and this was even before I became a Christian uh, two years ago, but I've always been into, you know, trying to level up in, in all ways, shapes or, or um, in, in life in general. And so when I was kind of like living, you know, uh, full of world, as they say, and, and you know, doing all the partying and stuff and all that, I still wanted to elevate my confidence in every single way. So I was hanging out when I used to live in Melbourne with a couple of guys that used to do literally what you just said, day game. And, and basically what they did was sometimes by themselves or with friends or together, but they'd go off into their separate groups. They'd actually go up to women and, and talk to them, but for the intention of picking them up. And when I sort of looked at that, I thought there were a few elements that I actually respected and admired, but then there were some that I didn't. And this was even back before I found God and became Christian. Um, what, I, uh, what I respected about it is the fact that they uh, put themselves in an uncomfortable position. And as a guy watching this, we all know that there is, as I said before, like that inherent uh, uh, fear of approaching women for you know a biological reason. But I respected the fact that these guys and I'll be honest with you, the majority weren't very good looking. You know, they were sort of geeky, some of them. They had what, no the, experience with women. The guys or the girls? The guys that were approaching women oh, in public. Right, right. And well, I was like, you, wow, you respect. Only pick up <laughs> a, unattractive girls. <laughs> no, but they were going up to everyone. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like, you know, I looked at them and I'm like, well, that's respect right there. Mm. The reasons they were doing it for was obviously to pick up and sleep around, which I don't agree with, um, you know, in its entirety. But the fact that they were getting outside the comfort zone was something that I respected. So mm. what I then did, I said to myself back in 2021, like what are my news resolutions for this year? And one of them was to get confident in being able to just speak to a girl for the purpose of getting over that barrier that I have fear 
around, which is simply just saying, hey, excuse me, um, where's the library? Or excuse me, I wanted to let you know that you look really beautiful today. Have a nice day. I wasn't hey, trying to do it. Boy on the wrist. And, and I wasn't trying to do it to pick them up, but more so just to get myself confident to yeah. speak to women and in you, general. And you got so confident at talking to girls that you ended up trying to pick up my girlfriend. <laughs> Wait, wait, what? No, 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 no. That was- Hang on a second. Okay, I'm talking 2021. You're talking 2010 at my own wait, party. How old was she in 2010? All right, wait, go wait, ahead. Wait, wait, clip that shit. <laughs> um, I mean, no, but you, you actually did bring up a point. You, you, and I don't even know if you realized you said it. You said one of the good things that they were doing was they were putting themselves in an uncomfortable position, yes. right? And that, that transcends into everything in life. I've, mm. I've heard- non pickup but I've, I've seen you know top top speakers very successful businessmen they all say anything that is worthwhile anything that they did that was good came from an uncomfortable position mm. and you you'll talk about this as well because i know you yeah. love you love this mm. um but basically yeah a, a lot of good things in your life a lot of amazing things or or stepping stepping up or leveling up came from putting yourself in an uncomfortable position if you're very comfortable if everything's good you kind of stay you stay stagnant you don't you don't go anywhere because it's it's comfortable. Mm. You're yeah. happy. But as soon as Definitely. you put yourself, you know, in, in, in something uncomfortable that you're not used to, yes, it might suck. You might hate it. Um, but you, you you develop, you improve, you get better, and then you, you you succeed. So Exactly. And I'm not saying like go out there as a young guy and try and pick up girls for the sake of picking it up. I'm saying there's actually no negative ROI if you were just to put yourself out there in public, say maybe once a day or, or once or you know, every couple of days, go on the street by yourself and and say, Okay, I'm gonna literally just speak to five women. And all I'm gonna say is, excuse me, do you know where the library is? Or excuse me, you look really nice today and walk away. Like that's it. You don't have to try Doesn't and pick them up. You don't have to do it. And I oppose, I oppose, you know, guys that wanna just do that to sleep around with women. That's bad in my opinion, don't do that. But you can literally just make someone's day. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like uh, how mediocre can life be where you work a nine to five and you're walking home from work and someone just compliments you in a respectful way. That's a positive. Mm. That's, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and, and you could be making someone's day. You could say, hey, hey, you've got a beautiful smile. Have a very nice day. Yeah. You know, obviously I wouldn't do that because I have a girlfriend. <laughs> but if you're a single, you if, you're, if you're a young single guy and you're trying to build your confidence, that's, as you said, like very rarely, unless you're, you, you're, you know, you're very creepy about it and you're, you know, breathing heavy and you're like over their shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's, but you'll get that feedback by going out. Yeah, like you might not know that you're creepy. Then you go try like, oh, that's I'm a freak. Thing. But I think... <laughs> Like most women, I'm not saying all women, but most women should respond as long as you're respectful mm. and you walk away and they see there's no threat and there's mm. there's you're not there's no ulterior motive. Mm. They should be quite responsive. Who I doesn't think. want a compliment? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So yeah. The, how the boys can implement this? They're watching. What's what's what do they implement? Do you, so get two of your boys go out into the city for the night. Uh, if you go for a dinner and just say, all right, we, we got to tick off five. We're gonna go out and just as we're walking through the city, approach five and we just tick it off. <clears throat> build the reps that I think, way. I think like, even, is that how they do it? Yeah, I mean, look, I think even before that, like ask yourself like, why am I doing this, right? So you can do it for many, many different reasons. Yep. I think that you have to know what your inherent values are as a human being before you do this, because if you don't have any values, even like relationship boundaries or uh, things you look for in a woman, for example, then you're gonna do this exercise, but overstep it into a territory where you actually end up, where you actually end up just doing it and, and picking up yours. Uh, uh, accidentally, so <laughs> like, oh no! Too bad. <laughs> but like, uh, oh no! I got uh, seven dates this week. I'm saying, I, I believe that w women, women, women. <laughs> Terrible! I'm too good at this. <laughs> I think that women find one trait that women find very attractive is a man that actually has values but holds them down as well. So, so, uh, so for example, in my case. Um, you know, me being a Christian, I won't actually have sex before marriage. So if I date a girl, I'm not going to sleep with him until. I'm married. And so the, therefore I wouldn't look for a girl unless they are marriage potential. So mm. I think that having value in that and knowing your value within that context is really important when you sort of try and build confidence in a relationship context, which is kind of leading to our next point about relationships in general and how to build your value as a man. So I think, yeah, exercise wise, know why you're doing in the first place, make sure that you have boundaries as to where is too far and, and where the limits are. But I think at the end of the day, like it's all about yeah, getting yourself out there. And just send it and let us know how it goes. Send us some videos. Send, send us a comment if it works for you, build your confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Send> us, <laughs> for me, for me, like like I was thinking about this the other day. Like what what I've found, I, I was thinking about what what did what did I use or how did I find confidence throughout my life? Because, you know, like many of many of the people probably watching, like I wasn't always confident. People who know me now know I'm very extroverted. I'm very confident. I've always been loud. But I wasn't always confident. How did you and, become confident? And honestly, I think 
um, if I was to put it down to something, it was getting to dream, getting into the gym and improving myself. So, um, you know, building muscle, getting more jacked, like as, as superficial as that sounds, um, for me, it, it definitely improved my confidence because I, I started, uh, people would respond to me better. Um, and I know it's not all about how, how people perceive you and look at you, but it does make a difference. Mm. You know, girls were nicer to me. You know, they'd com- mm. compliment me. Guys would become my friend easier. I would want to would want to hang out with me more. Um, and I know it's people can say, you know, they shouldn't want to just hang out with you because of your looks or whatever it is. But I'm just saying it did help me to improve my confidence. So then from there, I could work on other things. But mm. don't forget what looks actually equate to. <laughs> looks don't just equate to like, oh, he looks good and he obviously goes to the gym. It actually equates to the fact that like, how do you go to the gym? How hard do you actually work on a regular basis? Yeah. How much do you have to measure your calories? How much precision and discipline do you have in your own life? So it kind of relates to all these things. It's not just about, oh, Chris looks good, he's jacked, but like, yeah. what have you had to do that then tells a woman that you can provide for her in the best way possible? Yeah, that's 100%. Facts. Like, yeah, if you see it, probably why guys, it's easier to sort of make mates. It's like, oh, if, I, if you want to have a group of mates who are all, you know, high performers doing things well, if someone comes across and they're jacked and shredded, you know that they've got the character traits of discipline, hard mm. work. They they train in the gym. They're committed to what they put their mind to, and that's all character traits that you want as a man. And probably for girls, they're looking like that's what I wanted. To, oh, yeah. sorry, for guys in a mate and girls in a man. So that's probably why it opens you up a bit more. Yeah. So I guess we're we're not saying that it's it's the number one priority. You have to look good. You have to be fit. You have to be jacked. But in terms of what Je- what Bailey said, in terms of le- leveling up, it does pay it does play a part. You do want to improve your health. doesn't mean you have to get jacked. You just have to be fit. You have to be healthy because women gravitate to, to someone who's looking after themselves. You mm. know, even simply, you know, when you're a young boy, you don't really care about your skincare. You don't look, you don't really care about your hair. Like you can get some really cooked haircut and you think <laughs> it's cool because it doesn't really matter. But as you get older, cut. as you get older <laughs> and you mature, um, you know, taking care of your skin, having nice, clear skin, um, you know, it is girls take it, girls take notice for this. People take mm. notice of this. People, you know, even if you're going to the shops, people look at you. you. You have so many encounters with people and little things like this can help your confidence because people will respond to you better. So mm. I think just yeah. leveling up by taking care of yourself, whether that's in the gym, whether that's your skincare, you know, looking after yourself, getting enough sleep, mm. having the right supplements, having fruit, having vegetables, like having a good diet, all these things will help to level you up, help help your confidence. Well, that's what I found in yeah. For me, that helped. It's also, I think, what, what I see at work as is your self-confidence radiates in how you interact with the world and other people around you, right? If you're super insecure and you know in your mind, like, you know, I wanted to go to the gym this week, I didn't do it. Oh, I was supposed to work hard. I was supposed to do these tasks. I haven't done it. I haven't cleaned my room. In your head, your reserves, your self-worth and where, how you perceive yourself in the world is low. The way you interact with people will be lower energy. Oh, I'm not worthy. I don't have value. Mm. And people can actually feel that on you and, and it radiates in, in your energy and in your presence. Whereas Absolutely. on the flip side, let's say for, for a, you know, a few months, you've you know, done a, say a 75 hard challenge. You got up on your alarm mm. every day. Your room's perfectly clean. You've got a fresh haircut. You've been training in the gym super hard, eating clean. How do you think you're going to walk around the street? Mm. And when you look at someone, you're like, oh, okay, that's, that guy's confident. Why? Because he, he did what it takes to be confident. And that people feel that energy on you, like gravitate towards you because you're like, oh, this guy's doing something right. I agree. Yeah. And what you're going to find is if you start taking care of your health and obviously your physical appearance and everything that comes with it, you're going to attract more business opportunities as well because everything Mm. like has to start from some sort of foundation. So if you start from your body, which is, you know, your essential uh, working machine that elevates you to places where you need to go, that's going to inherently and and as a side knock on effect impact positively on your business or whatever you're doing. So I think like, how do you guys think that, you know, um, confidence relates to business? Would you say that uh, it has a direct effect? Because from my personal experience, I remember when I've done like, say challenges, like I did a a, a body transformation challenge a few times, one with Zach Perna and, uh, you know, EHP back in the day. I found that when I was like, sort of like, I locked myself into a 12 week challenge where I wanted to lose 10 kilos. And just by doing that, obviously I was doing all the health and physical stuff, but then that just like as a knock on, as I said before, that helped my business, you know, climb because now I was used to waking up at those times in the morning. I was used to having a routine and then I was using my time very wisely. And I think time and business directly relate. I mm. think I think from from what I've seen with you, with myself and, and with Bailey as well, I think knowing your worth with business, I think knowing your worth is number one because mm. even, even for, you know, simply put, like say with, you know, Jamie's always told me, always know your worth. Like 
simply put, like with, with a brand deal, for example, if a brand approaches you, knowing what you bring to the table, know, knowing that, hang on a second, I, I am valuable. I work hard. I, I know I can deliver. I produce good content. I'm a good person. I know X, Y, Z is going to be there. So I'm not going to undercut myself because I know my value. So, and, and I think that's a pivotal thing for in terms of business. Mm, yeah. But yeah. for me, for me, I was just thinking, for me, to be honest, um, having the right people around you is is very important. And I, th- I think when I was younger, um, I, I made sure that I would separate – I, would, I wouldn't hang out with people that I felt not confident with. Mm. There's certain people in everyone's life that, you know, maybe they make extra fun of you. They, they always make you feel small. Um, they, they pay you out more. And whether it's banter or not, there's this, you know if it's banter or not. Mm. And, and I would kind of stop hanging out with those people. And I'd only keep people <laughs> around me that would bring me up, mm. would make me feel good, would, would compliment me. Would I'm not saying they had to suck up to me, but were people that genuinely loved me and would appreciate me. And I would do the same. Mm-hmm. I would bring them up. I would, I would level them up. I would, I would always encourage them. But if you're around good people all the time, then you're slowly going to build your confidence because you're going to be like, shit, all my mates are saying I am good at my mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. I am good at sport. I, I, I did get that good lift and, and it was awesome or whatever it is. Or my, you know, my, the girl I'm dating is pretty or whatever it is. Like little things will all add up. Whereas if you're with the wrong people that are like, your shit, you, yeah. You're not making enough money. You're ugly. Why are you doing that? All these things. Genuinely, mm. you're going to feel shit. You're never going to build your confidence. And, yeah. and and that's a big thing I noticed. We, I actually I, I remember. Think, I think, sorry. I think um, I, I, did, I, I did it in, um, subconsciously as well. I just stopped hanging out with these people. And I think right now, guys, would be a great time to mention our sponsors for this video, Getaways. Sydney is a very big city and you don't always get this view everywhere. You know, this is the most iconic landmarks in the entire city, in the entire country, most likely. And uh, yeah, shout out to Getaways. Uh, You know, these guys have been amazing to us in terms of allowing us to use their facilities to do this podcast every single week. So if you guys do want to check them out, make sure to go to getaways.com.au or look in uh, the link in the description below. Well, yeah, I remember when I first started making videos back in 2014 and like a lot of people, like all my old high school friends, basically you just like used to talk smack about me behind my back and I lost a lot of friends. Shout out, and shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, the boys. I lost a lot of friends, including like, you know, a lot of my family. Um, my dad raged at me for doing what I did, but I remember like I had a select few people and you were definitely one of them, Chris. Uh, in fact, I think you were my biggest supporter out of all my friends and just having like good mates around you uh, when I was going through a time where I was starting something new and back then it was so... You know, it was very alienated social media in Australia. Mm. No one was doing it. So mm. I was stepping into this territory where no one knew what the hell was going to ha- uh, happen. Everyone was saying to me, oh, you know, you're going to lose all your job opportunities. You know, you're going to ruin your life if you do these comedy videos on the internet. How do you know it's going to work? And, you know, I had confidence in myself, but so many others didn't around me besides literally you and I'd say like a handful of people. Now I've made a career out of social media. So mm. it's very important having friends <laughs> around. And, and- Sorry, Bailey. Um, one more thing I was going to add, and I, I should have added this early, earlier, but I'd say actually the most important thing for me that has helped, with, helped me with my confidence is, um, believe it or not, God. So for, I'd say for the last 10 years, at least for the last 10 years, um, every night in my prayer, I'd pray for confidence. Mm. I'd pray, thank you. For, like, I'd say, thank you for my confidence. Please allow me to always be confident because... I, I value confidence so much. Like for me, if I'm not confident, everything falls in my life. Like mm. I, I, I need to be confident. It just helps me elevate in everything I do. So I, I literally pray every night. Like mm. genuinely every night I pray, please help me be confident throughout my day. And if yeah. God's on your side, you know, you, you're going to be that That's confident mother. That's a big mother. one, big one. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, adding to sort of what we're talking about before with like, you know, mates banter and, and having the people around you that sort of bring you up. I think it's it's one thing like, you know, when you're in school and you have a big group of mates, I think there's the common traits like it's always like not bully each other, but it's like playful banter. I think that's a very common thing. Like at least it was with all my boys. It's sort of like, it's just the way you interact with people is sort of like mucking around, like throwing shade at people. I think, I don't know from what, from what I've seen, girls are a bit more of the opposite, like uplifting, whereas guys can be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just the way we kind of operate. But I think, I think there's definitely value in like, it can go over the mark sometimes. And I think if you're, in a group of people that is a bit negative, be the guy to like start complimenting the boys. Yeah, and people yeah, yeah. will respect it. Like if you start saying, bro, I love that shirt on you. you 
you're you're gonna you look amazing tonight. Let's go out. Let's have an awesome yeah, dinner. Change the dynamic. Yes. It's like just be the guy to start throwing compliments, and people will be like, "Oh man, you're you're a legend." Like people want compliments, but sometimes when you're in a big group of mates, and what I at least experience, it's like the natural inclination is to sort of like bully each other and throw shade. Yeah, but. Yeah, be the guy to throw compliments and like if you can get people 100%. around you that are all lifting each other up and shift that culture. Yep. And we've definitely changed with all my my boys like trying to shift and like, you know, start complimenting each other, bro, you, you're carving up. That you, that you all feed off each other 100%. and that's what we have here and it definitely yeah. compounds. Or get new mates. That's what that's what we want to kind <laughs> of like. shift the culture. Yeah. Be, the, be the guy to like take yeah. lead. Exactly. And that's actually what, you know, all three of us are trying to do in this kind of social media space. We're trying to, you know, be the leaders in that shift or, or at least try and um, influence people for the better. Because yeah, you're mm. right. Like there are a lot of mates that, um, we'll just bring you down and as much as banter is banter and it's funny and obviously <laughs> we're having our banter with you the it other is day funny. on uh, WhatsApp. But I think that like, um, you know, tying it back into my own life, I definitely think that both of you and that's why, you know, we, we decided this podcast together because you guys as my mates really, I feel lift me up when I'm, you know, I've had some rough times and, and as you both know, I've had some rough times, you know, um, um, last year and I think that having mm. you both with me and, and, and lifting me up and pulling me out of that sort of, tough time um, has been really good and I actually remember um, Chris when Nick met you I remember what you said Nick Nick's behind the cameras I can't remember by the way I remember Nick was like you you said to me you were like man like Chris is like a really genuine nice guy and I remember when you guys first met it's 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 funny because when you meet people and you're around others you see how people interact with who and so Nick is obviously, you know, my, my friend and, and, and we work together. But I remember, Chris, when you met Nick, you know, you're obviously one of my best mates. But then when you met Nick, who's such a big part of my life, I remember like you were so interested in his life. You weren't just like, oh, yeah, cool, man. Like whatever, you're Jamie's man, I don't care about you. Like you were so invested into asking him questions. You were so invested into I still into am. <laughs> I still ask you every time I see him. You were so like, oh, bro, you're like, you're, like, you're a good looking guy. Like yeah. you're so yeah. like, you really care about people. Mm. And that's one thing that I really try and do in my own life. Um, it's easy to get caught up in, oh, you know, I'm I'm this person or have maybe empathy. Like, have empathy or have ego, but I, I really make a solid effort to say, for example, as as you know, in my career, I meet people on the street that watch my videos and I don't I don't I, I make a very um, strong effort to ask them about them as well. Not just it's not just about me. Hey, can mm. we get a photo, Jamie? Sure. How are you? How's your day? Like what are you doing as well? And I think mm. that just goes hand in hand with like empathy, emotional intelligence, caring about people, but also that also gives you confidence as well. Cause when you help others, it also gives you confidence that you're making the world a better place. Um, 100%. One more thing I want to touch on Chris is what you said about God. And I think we all have really good, yeah. really good uh, sort of testimonies on this. And I think first things first, like you need a very solid group of friends that can be a small group. Like I would ge genuinely say like you guys are my best friends and maybe like a few other people. Um, you don't have to have a big group of friends. You can make it small, but just make sure they're the right people. But then once you have that, don't forget if you're looking for other friends or just humans in general, we're all sinful creatures, we're all sinful beings and we, we can't help it a lot of the time. So we, as much as we wanna uh, be reliant upon humans um, of this world and, and people with you know fleshly desires as it talks about in the Bible, we also have to be reliant upon the creator, which is God. And I think for me being an atheist my whole life and then converting and finding God only two years ago, I can really see the difference in where my confidence has risen and how I've got so much more of like a, a foundation in my life where no matter who lets me down in a physical matter, in, a, in the physical realm, um, I still have God there. So mm. I went through like a pretty tough situation, you know, uh, last year. And I remember thinking to myself like, you know, before I, I knew God, I would be so dependent on myself. Like it's all my fault. It's all my doing. I have to figure everything out myself. But then having God in my life and knowing that there's the the creator of all things that's guiding me and, and because I put trust in him, he he's obviously like dictating where my life is going. It's a whole different level of peace and confidence that you have. It's so crazy. Like, it's whatever crazy. happens, I know I'm going to be fine because <laughs> God is with me. Um, and I'm sure you guys have. Bro, that was, that was uh, on what you said, like, I know from my life, but I, I remember I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about the the Kurdistan um, UFC fighters. There's like a big, big group of um, UFC fighters. They're animals, right? And they, they always win. They're very good, right? And when they come into the ring, they're so calm and peaceful. Mm -hmm. and, and they were interviewing one of them and they were saying they're, 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 they're religious, right? They've got their God. I know it's... You know, Muslim, Christian, but they've they've got their God, and it is the same same principles apply. When you have your God and you have some, uh, you know, a, a greater being that you believe in, 
It's already decision. It's already decided. Like if I go into a, if I go into a, in a soccer game, I pray to God and then I'm so confident because if I'm going to score, if I'm going to win, it's already decided. I'm going to try my best, but it's mm. up to God. Mm. Same with these guys. They go in there. They're like, if I'm going to win, I'm going to win. If I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose. It doesn't matter. But that confidence of knowing God's there for me, mm. always in everything I do, if I go into, you know, when I was going to job interviews, when I was playing sports, when I'm going to go on a date, you know, for the first time, when mm. I'm going to do anything, even for these podcasts, like you guys saw, we just did a prayer. Like having that is like almost like a shield over me. Um, and, it, and it just gives me gives me so much confidence. So for me, that's, that's a pivotal part. But I also was going to say, um, in terms of confidence for a young man on a less deep level, I think, um, you know, say make, making light of a situation um, So and also taking the piss out of yourself sometimes um, helps. <laughs> I think trying to not to be perfect, trying not to always, um, you know, I have to make sure I look perfect, I have to act perfect. Actually taking the piss out of yourself um, allows other people not to have to because if, you, if, you're, if you're comfortable with, you know, yourself not looking perfect, making a mistake, saying something wrong and then just joking about it, you, it, p- people are less inclined to pay you out about it or make <laughs> you feel small about it because you've already paid yourself out. Mm. You've taken it from them. I, I used to do that when I was young all the time. I was like, I, if I if I made a mistake or did something, I'd pay myself out. And people, bro, like, mm. people, people were like, oh, oh, okay. Bro, that's the Eminem. Uh, <laughs> what, what did he do in that, that original eight, eight Mile movie where he, he did the rap? Eminem, like that song that went yeah, 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 viral. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he, he pays himself out the whole rap but then flips it on the guy and then the guy's like, because they can't do anything if I you pay yourself out anymore. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you've already paid yourself you're out. Just, you've just owned it. You've owned so, like yeah, So this is a little laws. tip I, I'm saying like to build your confidence is mm-hmm. as weird as it sounds, sometimes pay yourself out. It doesn't have to be savage. You don't have to, you know, yeah. throw yourself There's a line. Don't overdo it. Yeah, but I think, I think yeah, taking the piss out of yourself in a lighthearted way and also being funny. Being funny. Like if you're the funny guy, yeah. people yeah. love the funny guy. <laughs> you know, just being funny is, is also another tip. That's right. Just, yeah. That's right. So, How do you be funny? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually about not caring because I have it to is. sort of well, you, I, I you know I, I've transitioned my brand heavily recently, but I was a so-called comedian for I don't know eight years. <laughs> um, I think being funny is just like being able to. Uh, it, it's like trusting yourself to know that whatever you say is going to be okay. Mm. It's but, almost like but pushing but all the you, line. Di- you literally just would take the piss out of yourself, and Correct. it was hilarious. Correct. That's, that's Correct. back to what I was saying. He, yeah. he would literally like his his whole character and demeanor, and he still has a bit of it. <laughs> he's just take the absolute piss out of himself, yeah, and yeah. people didn't know if he's serious or not. But that that's the funny part of it because yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. is he is he for real? Yeah, but like it's, I would it's say things like uh, well, out of pocket, out of pocket. Yeah, like oh yeah, no, I've got a small, you know what? Um, even like racist jokes against my own uh, ethnicity, which is Chinese. You know, or you right, name even it, doing you name things it. in public that like the reason they went viral wow, is like people watch yeah. that and they cringe because they're like, oh. <laughs> I would literally curl That's into it. a ball and die if That's that was it. Yeah. But he, I, I, I the library pranks and that. <laughs> but, the, but back to con- like he did the um, Nick Kyrgios video. Like that mm. takes confidence. But he's oh, he's embarrassed. That's, so, that's a whole But he's embarrassed level. himself that many times that, and I've done this as well, and I've learned this from Jamie. Mm. When you when you've taken the piss out of yourself so many times, you don't care anymore. Mm. He he got to the point where he's like, I can say or do anything to anyone and I have no shame. Like, mm. I don't care. No one's going to make me feel small. No one's going to make me feel like I'm shit. Mm. I am what I am and I know what I am and I know my value and no one's going to take that from me. Mm. Only you can decide if you're not worthy or if you're not good enough. Yeah. No one else can take <laughs> that from you. And as soon as you let yourself down, you let your guard down and start believing other people, that's when your confidence goes down. And I know that from me. If I start listening to other people's opinions about me, if they say something wrong, my confidence drops. But if I go out there, I'm like, I am good. I am great. I've got God. I can do this. No one can touch me. No mm. one can tell me I'm not good enough because I, I know I am. Let's mm. go. I'd love yeah, to. That Bailey, was awesome. Yeah, 100%. Bailey, I'd love to just, you know. <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> I'd, love Clip to, I'd love to uh, dive a little bit more into, um, you know, how God has helped us uh, in our confidence journey. And I think mm. you'd probably have a, a few good stories. Yeah, to definitely. Well. Yeah, like we're, like we're talking on, um, humans are flawed. Like you're going to get offended. There's, what I've found is like, if you're trying to meet the expectations of the world around you, you just, I don't know, like before I would like fully rely on God. I think the weight of the world is heavy, man. Like, especially as a man, the amount of things you have to achieve, the daily things you have to be doing, the, the people's expectations you have to be meeting, you got to be meeting, you know, whether it's like family, friends, like 
everyone, the whole world around you, especially with social media, everyone's putting expectations on you. And obviously, I mean, you guys probably would have felt it, even Jamie, like I think the more in the eye, it's probably even worse. I don't know. I haven't seen that. But I think even in general, even if you just, just, you know, go into school and the weight of the world can really, really weigh you down. So I think tying back to what these guys are saying, exactly, you know, having God on your side and knowing that you're walking in line with your purpose takes all the pressure off. Like mm. I know that, you know, awesome. if I, if I'm prayerful before I enter a job or before I enter a relationship or before I pretty much do anything, I know, I can walk in with confidence because I can say, God brought me here. He knows where I'm going. He's got my back. He's perfect. He has no, there's no weight on his expectations for you because he created you to fulfill what you're meant to do. So whether you're not the funny guy and you're a bit shy and awkward and, and sit in the corner and you find it a bit harder than you perceive, a bit harder to make friends than other people. Yeah. You're created like that. That's fine. That, mm. You have certain gifts and talents and you might be more empathetic than other people. You might not be the loud guy, but you might be able to see someone getting bullied 100%. and be like, hey man, I, I got your back. You know, and that's I, I'm your friend. You. That, that's it. That's and that's the, the way plan. you're created. So it takes all the weight of the world off and you're like, man, I can just enjoy life. Like God will bring the people into my life. I can, you know, what career I'm in. I've been brought there yeah. to learn a skill. And it's not like this Can't, feeling of as a man, yourself. you know, you oh, I've got to make millions of dollars so I can buy a house and provide my family. Whilst that is a way and you have to do that, it kind of takes a lot of pressure off because you're, you're just sort of serving one perfect God who's the biggest part, opinion doesn't change and truth doesn't change. Like, you know, this is why the Bible, like why we all uh, look, read it and, and look to it so often is because it doesn't change. Think about how quickly the opinions of the world change. Mm. This month you have to be, this guy and follow this agenda and follow all these things. Yeah. And then the next month you have to be someone different. It's almost yeah. like you have to be like a clown or something. Like yeah, yeah, you have yeah. to be evolving. Like yeah. what Multiple are we freaking faces. Pokemon? Yeah, but God's, <laughs> God's the same as he was yesterday as he's going to be tomorrow. Exactly. And so yeah. And just, just to tie that all, all off together, I think that's where if you're struggling with, you know, not identity, but like you're feeling, oh, where do I fit in the world? Where do I fit in mates, groups? Who am I? What's my purpose? Man, as soon as you lean into God, all that weight's gone and he'll actually guide you. He'll reveal things to you over time. It is a journey. It's a process, but it takes all the weight of the world off. You know who you are. You're true to who you are. Mm. And once, you have the tr once you're true to who you are at your core being, that's when you feel fulfilled, not yeah, trying yeah. to evolve and be a puppet master for all the people around you. So yeah. I really want to talk about what you just said because I think confidence and identity tie in so much with each other. Mm. And I want to just talk about like one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten off a uh, of a you could call me a Christian or a spiritual mentor, shout out to Stephen. And I remember, you know, as you said, like in this world, in this day and age, especially Gen Z, like there's so many issues about identity and, you know, there are agendas at play here and there that tell you that, you know, you need to be this or it's okay to be this or blah, 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 blah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And I think kids, especially Gen Z or even the generation previous to us are so confused about who they are, which means agendas like what is at play in this world uh, from the devil. Um, it's so easy to manipulate people into being confused and then just following whatever is 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 fashionable or worldly or, worldly or progressive mm. in this day and age. And I think the best piece of advice I've ever given is one of my mentors, Stephen, he said, look, there's so much confusion, confusion. There's so much confusion in this day and age, but the only identity that you should have, and this isn't about putting your identity in people or in certain movements or any sort of cultism or, or any of that, but only have your identity fixated in God mm. because God is perfect and God never changes. So mm. whatever has been prophesied, say for example, in the Bible will not change, but you see things change every day. And so how do you know exactly who you are if, if you're always ever changing? You need mm. something as a foundation and fixed. And yeah. everyone is different. Everyone has, as you just said, Bailey, like everyone you know has different quality traits. So for example, you know, I, uh, one person may be funny, one person may be shy, one person may be good at motivating others, one person may be good at uh, being empathetic, but it still ties into the same foundations and you don't have to feel like, oh, but I'm different, but you, you, you need to realize that you can still have that fixed foundation in God. Mm. And I think once you start seeing things in more of a spiritual sense, um, for a lot of you guys that don't know, I got uh, possessed um, a couple of years ago. And um, what I realized from this was that we don't just live in a world where um, you know we can tangibly see a mirror or a or a fan or a TV or a camera. We live in a very spiritual world. You know, in the Bible in Ephesians six twelve it says, "For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against rules of darkness, uh, against spiritual wickedness in high places." And what that means is that in this world, just because one plus one equals two in the spiritual world, which is invisible, 
The mm. spiritual world is actually what is the cause and effect of everything happening around us tangibly. Mm. Yeah. So like when you see things from like, they, yeah, oh, it's good. Rattling the verses off the top of your head, bro. That's awesome. That was good. When, when you see things that happen, say for example, this person has had bad luck their whole life or this person has had family illness or, or, or you know, something that's, that's happened constantly throughout the generations of their bloodline. It's not just related to, oh, you know, my mom or, or, or my grandma had cancer and then we also did. It actually relates to things that, uh, you know, um, generational curses or it actually relates to mm. things on the spiritual level, which no one looks at because it's not recognized conventionally by, you know, the governing bodies in this day and age. But when you start looking at things and this kind of ties back into confidence, when you start yeah. looking at things that God is always there and he loves all of us. And if we just put our faith and trust in him, then we can first of all experience e eternal life. But then secondly, have a constant guiding figure that knows what's best for us and trusts his plan then that naturally will give us confidence to live our day according to the Bible, according to the truth, and just have faith that whatever happens, we're going to be all right. Exactly, bro. And I think you see it all around you when people put their identity in other things. People will come crashing down. Look at the GFC when like the money markets crashed. Mm. All those people had their identity in, in money. Mm. You know, there was people jumping off buildings and stuff because like that was all they knew. Like that was yeah. their identity. As soon as that shatters, like your net worth, you know, sometimes you might be, you know, worth a couple of mil and then sometimes people do lose it. Like the market's are volatile. If your whole identity and who you are as a person and, and the, you think your value is because you've got the money and you've built that, that message in your head, as soon as that's gone, you're shattered. Mm. A lot of guys, even when they're younger, put their identity even in a relationship. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm this. And then as soon as that breaks, oh, they're shattered. Mm. They put their identity in, you know, plenty of things. Like Veganism even, or, even or like, yeah. A celebrity, an idol. 100%. They yeah. follow it, whether it's even sometimes people do it with race or like even religion, um, people think, you know, identify with certain man-made structures. As soon as that crumbles, they fall apart. So yeah, it just ties back if you sort of fixated on, on God as the creator, whatever's happening around you, good or bad, you can sort of stay, stay grounded and center. So that's it. And, 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 be a good person. I think I think being a good person, like everything we've talked about comes back to values as well. Being a good person, doing the right thing, um, it people will gravitate towards you. If if conf, if your confidence issue is because you're worried about having friends or people not liking you, if you're genuinely a good person, people are gonna like you. Maybe not everyone, but <laughs> you are gonna make friends. If you're genuinely a nice person, you're empathetic, yeah. you look at trying to help people, you yeah. you you wanna improve their lives, you wanna, you know, make them happy, whatever else it is, people are gonna gravitate towards you. Mm. You can you can join a sporting team, you can join a church, you can join, you know, debating, whatever whatever it is. And if you're a good person, <laughs> at least one person's gonna wanna be your friend. You're gonna you're gonna find a friend because there's gonna be someone else. Someone everyone is in the same situation. You you join a you join a team. You think everyone's confident. They're all strong. This and that. There's probably three or four other guys in there that are also shitting their bricks. They're yeah. like, fuck. Everyone's they think you're confident. Yeah, 100%. they're looking at you like you're confident, but mm. you're shitting bricks. Mm. Like yep. you go on a date. You know, you think, oh my god, this is gonna be so. This is gonna be scary. The chick's shitting bricks too. <laughs> she's got yeah, all these yeah. She's not confident yeah. either. Like, yeah. She's nervous. Like, so you've got to also think that other people are in your shoes. Mm. Other people are also thinking like the that. same way as you. Mm. Um, but if you're a genuinely good person, you will gravitate. People will gravitate towards you. Mm. And I think that's like one of the like keys. Yeah. Being a good person. And that's what we kind of want in the locker room as well. Like bringing people together, sort of tying back to a story um, and sort of tying in the element of like why it's the people around you. And, and that's what gives you the fulfillment in life. Like we're made to be in community. So for example, um, when I was in, when I was in Europe last year, I went to London to work for a few months. I'd just been on a, on a mad holiday throughout Europe for a few months, having the time of my life, like meeting up with mates, family, all this got to London. I was by myself, new city, didn't really know anyone. The family I was staying at was away at the time. So I went into this new house. I didn't know. I didn't know anyone. And I felt oh my the God, first time I'm, like I'm blonde, blue eyes. <laughs> I've got nothing going I'm for me. I'm so far. I'm ripped. I'm from oh, Australia. Oh, life's so tough. <laughs> Australian accent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> no, but legit. I, I literally felt like I get mistaken like, for Chris like, Hemsworth. It might have been. The, it might have been the first, like the post, like travel highs, like coming down. But I was literally like, I don't know anyone. And for the first time, I was like nervous, scared. Like I was like, yeah. what's going on? I felt you know post just a bit down. I was like, and then over a f over the next few weeks. You know, I, I joined a gym. I started, you know, just going up to a few people and they're like, oh, hey, bro, like, 
um, I'm new around here. Like, you know, where's where's good to go out in the nighttime? And then from that, like, mum be like, oh, there's this place down here. Are you Aussie? I know your accent. Like, oh, you should come out with us. And then like- they <laughs> I introduced being Aussie overseas though. Yeah, being Aussie is clutch. Yeah. <laughs> Especially and, um, the UK. <laughs> For <and> friends. <laughs> yeah, but, but just- they wouldn't have come up to me. I had to go out of my way to say, oh, like, you know, oh, are you almost done with that set, bro? Like, and then just say, oh, I'm from Australia. It was yeah. my first time and you here. could have got rejected. You could, could have got rejected. People, and I did. People, some people were like, oh yeah, well, cool, bro. And then, but a few other people were like, oh man, nice to meet you. I'll get your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, then I went and got a haircut, spoke to the barber, made That's common it. ground with him. And, yep, and, yep, 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 yep. and every time I spoke to the people, the ones that responded well, I was sort of like coming at it from like giving them a compliment and being interested in them. And then as a return, they want to feed that back. So then, you know, I went from bit feeling a bit alone and then like like really alone. It's just like sort of me and God, you know, this is a space to all of a sudden now oh, I'm going to the gym. I say hi to a few boys there mm, and then you it. go out and it's just, and then that network compounds. And then within two weeks, and then I started, started working at the office that I was working in the head office of my company. And then I met everyone at work there. And then I was like, you know, they introduced the other people, their friendship groups, you got going out with people. And then within two weeks, I was like, I love London. Yeah, I went from yeah, going, go. I hate this place. I want to go back to Sydney to going, oh, this is sick. I could move here. And then it sort of it sort of clicked and I realized it's actually the people around you that makes a difference. It wasn't the place. Like I thought mm. it was just London I didn't like, but I realized mm. it's because I didn't have my close friends, my comfortable, you know, people around me building me up and, and that friendship and that connection that's so important for everyone that I realized like that's, I that's where the value that's is. Awesome. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in the bush. If you're with your boys having fun, if we teleported to the bush, like if you make it fun, 100%. Yeah. it's but awesome. How, but how good is travel? Travel's like, amazing. Travel, like uh, I know we've all done like a lot of it. Um, when I was 19, um, straight out of school, I moved to the UK by myself, not knowing anyone besides my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> so you did, some, the same, you did the same as me then? Correct. Some may say I moved over for her, which pre which I might have. You probably did. Uh, inherently. But <laughs> I, think, I think traveling, what it does, especially to like young guys out there that maybe um, are still in school or just finishing up and not sure what to do. I think what it does, it actually like allows you to go somewhere completely foreign and have absolutely no one to rely on besides- Restart yourself or, and, and God, you know what I mean? Mm. And so like you learn things that you will never learn here. And that's why I always say to Nick, um, bro, you should travel sometime by yourself. And and uh, actually Nick, jump on the couch real quick. We're going to introduce Nick for this seg segment real quick. Oy, get him Oy, back. Right get him back. Get he, him he was back. a fan favorite from last week. So jump jump over. Yeah, everyone, but loves, I wanna, yeah, everyone loves, loves Nick. The girls are going wild. The girls are going wild. So the reason uh, I want to bring Nick for this section is because- And the guys. And the guys, yeah. Nick actually went overseas for the first time with me uh, two weeks ago, for the first time ever. So jump over here, bro. Business class. And, and, and business class, yes. I'm a so nice that's guy. That's a nice first. <laughs> but uh, yeah, jump over here, bro. You come out of your comfort zone. That's it, you come out of your comfort zone. And I think like traveling, I wanna hear how it was for you. Obviously you had me and, and you know, other people around, but traveling in itself, like I remember my first time overseas, such a pivotal like, maturity moment for me to gain confidence about myself and about life. So how was it for you? And just introduce yourself again real quick. Um, Nick. Yeah, I guess before I went overseas, it always seemed like impossible. It's like I would never go overseas by myself. And now that I got thrown in the deep end, literally traveled 30 hours by myself for the first time overseas. It's awesome. Where'd like you guys go again? I went to Saudi Arabia, but I had to stop off in, what was it China, then Dubai and then Saudi. Yeah, and, and he, he counts our stopovers as being to those countries. Well. <laughs> I, I think that's cool. He should. <laughs> he should. That's a first international flyer tactic. Yeah. But yeah, now like if I want to go overseas by myself, say say something happens and I have to travel by myself overseas, like bang, I'll go do it. I didn't get the confidence. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. the confidence now. But before it was like, it was like it wasn't even in my brain. It was like, it just seemed like impossible. Mm, but now a great it, just, point. it just seems like catching a train, you know? Mm. So like, I'm so grateful that I got thrown in the deep end to do that. Thanks to Jamie. Thank you. Yeah. And, and he was happy. He's like, yeah, you got to travel by yourself. He was and like, me, so and me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Jamie likes to see me suffer, but it's always the suffering that helps you grow. That's so, what we talked about. Yeah. Uncomfortable situation. But you guys brought up, yeah, Jamie and Bailey, you brought up a good point. I, I personally haven't done that. I've always said anyone who wants to learn about themselves, do a solo trip, mm. whether it's backpacking, whether it's through Europe, you will learn things about yourself that you never thought you would know because you have no one to depend on. 100%. You know, if you if you miss a flight, you have to deal with it. If you get something gets stolen, you have to deal with it. You have to go to the hospital. You have to go to the police station. You have to fend for yourself. Like everything's on you and you will really test yourself, but you will also come so much stronger from it. From there, 
as, as Nick said, you feel invincible. You're like, I can do this. Yeah. Once I've traveled by myself, gone through the ups and downs, I, I can do anything. Yeah. I think it's awesome. You really it's, it's exposed, like being solo, like I only did it for the first time last year, but you really expose yourself. Like, and the coolest thing that I noticed is like, you're so much more observant. Like I'd only ever before traveled like with a big group most of the time. Um, and you're just sort of like caught up in your conversations. It's like, oh, if we all travel, we're like in our little bubble. But when you're by yourself, you're literally like your eyes open to everything. Like you start hearing the conversation that's happening behind you. You start hearing, oh, I don't know what that language is. And you start observing things from a much deeper level and everything's on you. If you, if you miss your flight, you didn't prepare long. You didn't prepare long enough. If you don't have a transfer exactly. set up, that's on you, man. If you're not, you know, meeting people- you. No one's to blame. It's completely you. on yeah, you. Yeah, so yeah. you learn a lot about yourself. It gets you very far out of your comfort zone, which is awesome. And do you yeah. know there's like uh, just to maybe just touch on one more thing about travel. So um, I think there's a massive difference though when you travel, depending on who you're with, because a lot of the time, you know, as Aussies, for example, the first thing is we're so far away from the world. Mm. So when you travel, you realize. That. I'm sure you realize that recently. The second thing that um, you know, uh, I guess, will uh, make your travel experience uh, one way or the other is if when you go travel, you still hang out with Aussies. Because if you travel overseas and you just hang out with Aussies versus if you're hanging out with the culture that is mm. that is where you, you are. You don't get the full experience. They're completely different. So when I go to China to visit my dad, my dad, you know, he's an Australian citizen, but he's from China. So when I'm there, I'm fully immersed in the Chinese experience. I don't mm. see any Aussies nowhere besides my dad who's just got a passport, but he's still Chinese. So um, when you and I went to Saudi, we we're still around Aussies, right? But I was saying to Nick before, had we gone somewhere where maybe I wasn't there and it was just you by yourself and you had to you know, live with people from Saudi Arabia or a different country, that would have been a whole different culture shock. And I think when I went overseas to the UK at 19, I was forced so far out of my comfort zone because I was only 19, because I, was, I moved to England to try and make it as a pro soccer player, but also because I wasn't around any Aussies Mm. That makes it a million yeah. times different. I agree. And I think that's what, uh, when you go to Armenia, Chris, that's the same, right? Yeah, 100%. Agree. Yeah, like, look, it's, I guess with Armenia, like, it's it's a little bit different because I, like, I fluently speak the language. Um, Armenians are very, very, like, even if they don't know you, like, like an older guy is like your uncle, mm. your auntie. Like, we have yeah, that, yeah. That's we, cool. we have that culture where, like, some random man will be like, hey, come here, son, come have some food. <laughs> like it's very like that with, with the, I guess, the, the WOG ethnic cultures. So I'm, I'm fortunate in that sense. Like you, you always kind of feel like at, you're at home. So it's a bit different. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to, I, wanted to um, I guess, maybe finish it off with, um, I think you should just take that risk. Like if, mm, if you're a young mm, guy watching yeah. this. <laughs> if I'm to if, lose. I think, I think exactly. When, when, when you're when you're, you know, you've got the question of, should I do this? Should I say that thing? Should I ask that girl out? Should I go for that job? Should I, um, you know, register for this? Whatever it is, just take the risk. You have nothing to lose. Sure, you might be embarrassed for five seconds. You might get rejected by, you know, the job place, the girl, um, your friends, whatever else it is. And then what? Mm. And then what? It's 10 seconds of yeah, feeling yeah. like shit and then everyone's forgotten about it. And Love then that. you move on and you can try again and again and again. I Like uh, one of my mates had um, had told us, I think it was Alistair to be honest. He had said that there was this thing that he had he had learned from um, something that he had watched and it was it was called like the three, two, one rule mm. where it kind of prompts you to actually do something. So if, if you're ever like uh, kind of anxious or you don't want to do something, you count from three to one. So three, oh, uh, that's what he used to do when he used to wake up in the morning to have that. a cold yeah, shower, right? So it, it, it's so simple, right? And mm. this is a little hack that if you guys want to use. So uh, essentially it's, as I said, he counts from three, two, one, and you do it. And it just kind of prompts you to, in that second, you're like, you have to either, do it. either I'm going to bitch it or I'm going to do it. Yeah. Because if and, you don't do it, then it's not You, a, you feel like you let yourself bad, down. Yeah. Exactly. And it loses its value. Mm. So that's something like, like potentially some guys could use. Um, and, and you know, if you're going to send that text to that girl that, you know, that, oh shit, should I send it? Mm. Three, two, one, send send oh it. shit, I sent it. And then you're blocked um, on every channel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> you, life is too short. Yeah. Life is yeah. too short. If you're a young man watching this, life is too short. Those those little moments in your life that you, you didn't do because you didn't have the confidence to do could honestly change your life. Mm. You could, you could, 
miss out on a job opportunity. You could miss out on your potential wife. You could miss out on making a friendship that networked you to X, Y, Z, to travel mm. the world, to to meet other people, to to do things that you've never thought of. You yeah. you, you never know. I and, love that. And you, and the other end of it is you just got a little bit, you just more got confident. a little bit of em embarrassment and then you've actually built more confidence. confidence. So for the next week, like we challenge you guys to like, Yes, take, I love take that. that leap, mm. take that jump over the next week. We challenge you. This is going to be us as well. Yeah. I think it'd be so sick. Like if everyone in the locker room here to make the commitment for over the next week to get a bit outside their comfort zone, approach a stranger. Uh, we challenge you to do that. And then if it works, you know, if you try it, we'd love to hear the stories as well. So like mm. send Three, us a DM. I reckon we might even DM. read some out if there's some cool ones. That make, it easy, make it easy, make it easy. So yeah, we challenge you guys to, you know, get outside your comfort zone. Let us know how you go. I think we should start including more, uh, you know, more people, more viewers in our episodes moving forward. So Definitely. if you guys have a question or you want to comment on something that we said in the episode, DM us on Instagram at Locker Room Chat Podcast and uh, all other platforms as well. And we'll see you next episode. Yes. Peace. Thank you. See ya.